Hey, what's up, guys? Anshul here from Alpha Code. The break took a little bit longer than expected, but I am back. So let's wrap up our domain driven design, what have we learned until now, and then move on to the practical side of designing microservices architecture. Right, so what did we learn? Let's take one more analogy, as I always do, and let's try to design a city this time. How does a typical city get designed? First, a person came in there and he built a house and then another person came in, he bought a land somewhere and then he built a house and then this kept on going and in the end, you have this big unplanned city, right? And this is what happens in a typical development environment. You have one developer at first, he creates some classes and his own design. Someone else comes along and you give him a feature to implement. He designs his own set of classes and in the end you are left with this big ball of mud. Which is a typical domain driven design terminology. Whenever unplanned changes keep piling up, in the end they all end up becoming a big ball of mud. Which is very difficult to digest and to move forward with. And this is a planned city. So whenever you start designing a microservices architecture or, or any software for that matter, you first do some planning, you give designated areas to all your developers and you end up with these beautiful microservices which are contained within them. These are bounded contexts and you have your own ubiquitous language within this and it, it looks very nice and it is maintainable. And this is what we aim for when we design our software using domain driven design. So this is basically a big ball of mud and this is domain driven design. All right. So what are some key points to take away from domain driven design? First is that you should always, always design your software in top down fashion unless your domain is very trivial. So top down means that you first look at strategic domain driven design and then go to tactical domain driven design. Always first think about your bounded context and your domain and your subdomains and your core subdomains and then separate them out and then think about each subdomain separately. Of course, focus on what distinguishes you from your competitors and understand what you must excel at. So this is again focusing all of your energy and resources in your core subdomain that makes you stand out from your competitors. Don't try to be best at everything, at least not at the start. Don't chase shiny objects by throwing technology at business problems and people do this, really. In fact, I had a friend who really loved TitanDB, which is almost dead now. And he once said to me, this is my life's goal that I'm going to use TitanDB in one of my microservices, no matter what. If you have that attitude while designing your software or microservices architecture, of course, you will never design a great architecture because you are trying to chase shiny objects by throwing technology at your problems. So don't do that. First, recognize the problem and then look for what is the best solution for that problem. And please, please do place emphasis on your naming and operations as we just saw in last lecture, how you can change the readability of your product by placing emphasis on naming and operations. So there are some important tips that I would like to share with you. First is don't work for a company that thinks of software as a cost center. So think about this. If your company thinks of software as a burden and they are using it just because everyone else is, that's really unfortunate. Because companies who understand how software gives them a competitive edge are champions in their verticals. And maybe that is the reason why some companies like Airbnb or Uber and Netflix are winning this battle in their verticals and they have grown so big in such small amount of time. So keep in mind that if your company tries to hire the cheapest engineers in the market or it seems too frugal while allocating hardwares to you or while profit sharing with the developers, I don't think you are getting what you deserve and and there's a great chance that company is never going to become a respectable tech company. 
Well, DDD will just look like OOP when you get the hang of it. I don't know about you, but when I started learning about OOP, it really looked unimportant to me. I thought, what the hell, why am I learning this? But now when designing my software, I cannot even think without OOP. Okay, so don't create heavyweight blueprints before development. Follow an evolutionary approach. I know when developers start designing their softwares, they become very excited, especially the architects. And they design very heavy blueprints from top until the bottom. And that never really works out in practical. And you should always follow an evolutionary approach. Just try to find bounded context in your architecture and try designing your microservices around that. Give some guidelines to your developers and let developers design those architectures for you and then you could review it and tell them how it should be designed. Don't try to do everything until the bottom. Write your code and documentation so that it represents the domain. Very, very important. So have you ever heard that a developer of your team is talking like he does not have the domain knowledge of the whole application? <laughs> Perhaps yes, right? I think you can understand the reason uh, because the design of the application does not represent the domain of the system. And so developers know only the portions that they have worked on. And that is really sad, isn't it? So don't do that. And lastly, build a product for which you can provide long-term warranties. Bad brands does not give warranties because their product is not maintainable. And they themselves don't trust their product. If you design your product using domain-driven design, it will be much cleaner and organized. You can provide guarantees for your product. So I guess that was it about domain driven design. Let's talk about monoliths and microservices ecosystem from next lecture. Thank you.